is that they're not really bedded into the season yet in many respects because Robertson missed the first couple of events, got married, so the Championship League and British Open weren't on his agenda. And of course, as Jill has explained, because of <laughs> COVID-19, Mark Williams had to miss a qualifying tournament for the European Masters and also the recent English Open. So his momentum in danger of being interrupted. Yes, it's a fair point you make because actually his form was excellent prior to that, not only in winning the British Open, but you know, he did everything but beat John Higgins in Northern Ireland. Don't know quite know how he lost that match. He was well in front, got through in German Masters before he was put on the sidelines. So everything he's done has been good. And yes, there's a doubt about him today, but there was doubts about him actually in, in August. He'd had problems with gout. And the two things are very different comparing the two, but in adversity, he usually finds something. Yeah, absolutely correct. Of course, you would make Robertson favourites. But Williams, not without a chance. Can we please make sure all the phones are switched off? I think uh, you know, on the head-to-heads, which I was just looking through earlier, Robertson's had the better of, of things. But, of course, in recent years, Williams' career, when he won the World Championship again, you know, it, it went up a few notches from a few years that had gone before and he was losing to players like Robertson. And ultimately, it's a best-of-seven frame match, which means that uh, anything can happen when you get players this good. That's an excellent safety shot. That is absolutely <laughs> um, putting Mark Williams in all sorts of trouble there with that shot. And it looked as if it was just a question of getting the cue ball onto the cushion, but he's done better than that. He's covered all the reds. He's in real trouble here. It's one of those where he's got a clear shot at reds, it's not the issue, but the reds he wants to have a clear shot are the ones he snookered behind. The black's on as well, so I mean, he just can't afford to leave anything on here. The table could not be better for scoring, so that really was a tremendous just defensive shot there from Robertson. got an all-round game we know how well he pots but at this level you've got to have the other side to your game I haven't seen Mike Williams take this long on a shot for a while he's already a minute 20 and he, he seems not that much closer to knowing which shot to play he might be able to play it off one cushion onto the red near the pocket but the red's far enough away from the pocket to make that a difficult shot to get anywhere near The double kiss was certainly a concern. He's given a chance away. He's in big trouble there. Goodness. Yeah, I think Williams pretty much had to leave a red. Mind you, where he did leave Robertson could have been a whole lot worse. Obviously, the safety what? aspect of it was there, but 
Alexander Arnold Williams. I think the one thing about Mark Williams is he knows it's a tough game, but as you heard him say, he also knows he can win. He's not frightened of anyone. Four. I don't think he lets his opponent bother him too much. He's not playing the person sitting in the chair. He's experienced enough to know it's what he achieves on the table. Five. He went through a spell deal where... And who knows, he might still adopt this philosophy that in the odd frame that he was involved, which went down to a respotted black, he tried to cut in the black off each spot. Now, the opening red here, it was easier than that, but it was of the, the same kind of ilk. Twelve. And now, what a good chance. Thirteen. Twenty. I think conditions are absolutely perfect today. There was a suggestion that when the table was brand new yesterday, the cushions are not really so bouncing away from the cushions as they you'd like. They were a little soft, but after a day, the table will settle in and it looks a beautiful surface. conducive to top play and we saw that with Judd Trump last night how much 29. better he played having had some time on the table 36 37. It's a very dangerous occupation writing Mark Williams off at any given time, in any given place, when he's playing snooker. The most recent of his three world titles. Tell us that. Who would have thought going there Fortitude. before the 17 days at the Crucible began? He was going to be the one lifting the trophy, but in the end, he did so having played brilliantly and in my opinion in terms of quality and drama combined he won the greatest ever world final Thank you. 43 there's been more drama there's been more quality but not meshing the two together that was just one of the most extraordinary matches I've ever seen Just a little bit worried about where the pink will go when respotted here. It's what he's just studying. Will it go on his own spot or no others available below the spot? I, don't, I suppose he would probably prefer it to go below. Just frees up the two reds in open play a little. And he's banking on it now because it has to go below. Otherwise, if it goes on his own spot, then he's not on the ready he's played on. Yeah, we'd be relieved to see this from the free Tatiana Wollaston. Well, that's perfectly played again. It uh, looks an easy shot, but when you finish there, your route onto the next red is, is absolutely as easy as it gets. It's all about controlling the cue ball. And I think the other thing about where the pink ball is now, it actually works in his favour because he might be able to land on it just off straight. And 55. open up the remaining reds from that ball, depending on how straight is on this red. 
Well, he certainly would like to plant the pink. As it happens. 56. He didn't have quite the angle to land in behind it. He has looked to see if there's a plant of any description in there as well. So he spotted one, hasn't he? Don't need to break the reds up if they're going to open themselves up. 63. Yep, well spotted. Annoying that he finished there in the blue, but 68. The break, 69 the lead. 69. Yeah, break of 69, so the snooker already required. But only one. Can't imagine, given Mark's vast experience and his respect for Robertson, he'll be doing anything outlandish. Mark Williams, 69. Well, some of the lines of point you've made because you've played a good safety shot. Okay, there's one long red available, which Robertson probably has to have a go at. What a good shot. One. The speed he played it, or lack of speed, I think he'd like to play that with a bit more pace. But of course, holding for the black, he had no choice. So, a twofold here. One, clearly he's going to try and get the snooker, but also, Eight. if that fails, he's getting some table time. The normal plan of attack here in this kind of situation when one snooker's needed is to get the snooker in behind the pink. That of course though is assuming the pink's on its spot, which here it most certainly isn't. Sixteen. Seventeen. So it will be one Thank snooker because he clearly isn't going to take a, a low value colour here. Certainly he wouldn't want to. Twenty five. It's a bit of an annoyance that the pink is away from its spot because clearly often it's on its spot at this stage and just play the most simple snooker behind it from the last red. And I guess he doesn't even have to leave the red on the table. He can try and get the snooker perhaps later on, given that, it, as we were saying, 32. it is one only. 33. Off under player, somewhere in bulk with the cue ball to get a snooker on the yellow behind something else. Up at the other end of the table is a pretty good spot to be in. Okay, not quite what he's looking for. He went through a period around this time last season, actually, where Robertson won a whole bunch of frames after requiring one, two, or even three snookers. 
This frame is far from over. Neil Robertson, 40. Well, we've just overrun that. I don't think that Mark Williams will be too much troubled by this because <laughs> on a bad day you hit the yellow and knock the, the black into the left middle. We just double check that that's not on. It's always worth checking in advance. But now that's made it even more appealing, I think. Fill the table, the black going near the brown. You, you're looking for a little target to get the ball in behind, and it's even bigger now. Yes, you touch on a really salient point a little earlier, Neil. The mindset when you need one snooker is very different from when you need a snooker with a free ball attached, something like that. Robertson's right in this, and this is a tough shot. Played well. Yes, it's not impossible. He could take the yellow here and try and get the snooker on the green, because the green's not helping him as much as where the brown and, and black are. I'm not sure he's got the angle. I think he, he will. I think he'd want to be putting too many more balls. Two. He could take the green, I suppose, and then lay the snooker behind the black on the brown, but it is taking away quite a big area to get snookers behind. I think when he's landed, it might be that's his option. Five. So he should get the snooker. It's a question of how difficult he can make it. <laughs> Neil Robertson, five. Of course, we've already seen in this tournament a frame one when someone requires a snooker on the brown. That was Judd Trump yesterday against David Lilly in the first match of the opening group. Got the snooker on the brown. Cleared up. The one major negative for Robertson is that Mark Williams is so savvy around the table. All of a sudden the table's not quite so appealing now for getting the snooker. I think there's an argument that the pink ball is the one you'd aim to get behind now. The other two are just too far in the middle of the table. So if Neil could just get an angle around the table in behind the, the pink, that's a possibility here. I think the shot is on. It has to be well played. Well, he's tried. Pace looks good, anyhow. Wow, what a shot. I mean, that really is first class. Okay, the shot's on. That's one thing. Playing it is another. There are snookers and snookers, and that is top bracket. This reminds me so much of a shot he played in the World Championships where he actually didn't look at the ball he was trying to hit and he ended up potting it into the, one of the pockets. The top right, it was so similar to this shot that Williams had. 
I don't know if he'll do that this time, but he was end up looking at the ball he was trying to hit instead of looking at the cue ball. Bizarre. It's not easy. This is a very hard angle, straight onto a cushion. Easily missed this. Came as no surprise to me. Well. He doesn't want that in. Neil Robertson, four. Oh, goodness me. The, the, the wheel's fallen off. That's a WCS. Worst case scenario. And of course, Robertson, well aware of the psychological damage he could do to Williams by winning the frame in this manner. He's a man known for piling up centuries, but winning a frame in this manner, stealing it, has far more impact than any century. Just get himself in a bit of a tangle here. <laughs> so many options open to him, he didn't know which one to take. Playing on the blue to the left middle, it seems to be the one. Oh, I think he'd like to have been a fraction straighter on this. Come around the back of the pink, it seems now. Well, again, Nine. I mean, you just couldn't put it that ball any better with your hand. Played two really top class shots here. The snooker was exceptional 15. that he got, which gave him this chance, and that positional shot on the blue is very good as well, Phil. Williams has done that.